employees have to believe in your compliance program and do business through your compliance program by believing in it. Well, the same is true for ESG. And how can ESG strengthen the organization's connection to the employees and the employee's connection back to work and then in a 360-degree approach? Well, this is where the purpose of your organization and, more importantly and more specifically, your ESG program can help that engagement. ESG has exploded into compliance and business consciousness in 2021. Join Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, on the ESG Report and learn about sustainability risks, opportunities, and issues that business leaders and compliance professionals need to know about regarding ESG. How can a chief compliance officer or compliance professional Think about the design, creation, and implementation of an ESG program. Obviously, many companies are trying to implement this so that they can utilize this for a variety of reasons going forward. I have advocated that compliance is uniquely situated to lead a corporate ESG effort and that the chief compliance officer is in many ways the person also to lead this effort. I was interested in all of this in reading a recent Harvard Business Review article entitled, What is the Purpose of Your Purpose? Where authors Jonathan Knowles, Tom Hunsaker, Hannah Grove, and Allison James looked into creating purpose in an organization. Their article laid out a great roadmap for many companies to identify an authentic and motivating basis for alignment among key stakeholder groups. For the elusive concept of purpose, I found their piece a great way to think about bringing ESG into your corporate purpose. For the chief compliance officer, determining an ESG strategy is fundamentally a business decision and must be anchored in your business strategy. This means, quote, identifying the most authentic and motivating basis for alignment among key stakeholder groups on which the success of your business depends, end quote. Moreover, determining and then implementing such a strategy sits at the intersection of four different business agendas. Number one, marketing and sales, where it can help customers and enhance customer loyalty. Number two, for HR, where it can use such a strategy to attract, engage, retain employees in the ever more important hunt for talent acquisition and retention. Number three, In the areas of governance and sustainability, such a program can enhance environmental, social, and government performance at your company. And number four, for strategy and finance, such an approach can grow or rather guide how resources are allocated and risks are managed going forward. The authors begin with the idea that there are three senses of purpose. They are competence, which the authors define as the function which your products or services provide. Second, culture, which they define as the intent in which you run your business. And third, cause, which they define as the social good for which your organization aspires. These three senses operate in different manners, which can often be confused. For the CCO, separating these three senses into three components can be an important exercise. Here, the authors identify three key gaps in these three senses which every CCO must overcome, the cause competence gap. This is the lack of alignment between the nature of your business and the espoused cause. Sometimes it's not obvious. When you're such as when your business is pushing at odds with your stated goals. Next is the competence culture gap, which is when your company is valued by customers but treats its employees poorly, usually through overwork, low salaries, wages, or tolerating a culture that is somewhat less than respectful. The final culture cause gap is where your organization has a clearly stated purpose, but employee engagement on that purpose is low. To remedy these weaknesses, the authors have developed a five-step approach to finding your corporate purpose. Once again, these are excellent ways to help create and foster a overall corporate ESG program. Number one, identify the types of interests and constituencies for your corporate ESG program. 
the authors identify four different types of interests. Number one, sales and marketing. Number two, employees. Number three, governance and sustainability. And number four, strategy and business evaluation. As a CCO, you will need to work with all four groups to navigate a joint statement for the internal and external constituencies who will need to buy into this approach. Your internal consistencies include employees, senior management, board of directors, and shareholders. Your external constituencies could include potential shareholders, third parties such as suppliers, localities where you do business, and of course, customers. Two, the three senses of purpose. All three senses have their advantages. As the authors note, competence-focused purpose presents a clear value proposition for both customers and employees. A culture-focused purpose creates internal alignment and collaboration with key partners. A cause-focused purpose aligns customers, employees, and communities around the societal benefits that the companies generate. End quote. Moreover, each will have overlap in your overall ESG agenda. Three, link your ESG strategy to purpose. What will be the biggest drivers for your organization in 2025 and beyond? Obviously, sales and growth are critical, but what about talent acquisition and retention? Is it expansion through organic growth or through mergers and acquisitions? How about access to capital markets, including private equity financing, floating new shares, or even bank financing? Whatever the purpose is or are, purposes are for your organization, the authors note that you should, quote, develop a clear sense of business objective that the purpose will support. How can it enhance the relevance and sustainability of your value proposition to customers and other stakeholders and strengthen the company's relative advantage? This step produces a short list of three to five key ideas for defining your purpose in a way that strongly aligns with the overall strategies of your business. Number four, get out of silos. Here you need to be seen as moving past simple corporate self-interest. The authors list several questions which you can ask to your working group. These questions include, quote, is the usefulness of what we provide so self-evident that we need say nothing more? Does the nature of our business make it credible for us to assert that we are out to do good? Do our leaders' behavior support the idea that we are in business to make the world a better place, even if that is not our core focus? Do we deliver value to customers while also being an attractive employer, partner, and good corporate citizen? How do we do business creation for value for society in ways unusual for our industry? By asking and answering these questions will help you to move past the self-interests of the groups that you identified as your internal constituencies and perhaps even external constituencies as well. Number five. Embed purpose in corporate behavior. Execution is where the rubber meets the road. As with all things corporate, it starts with senior management. You must set the tone, commitment, and of course, walk the walk. But the interesting thing the authors note is that while senior management tends to view such efforts as a top-down experience, most other stakeholders experience it from the bottom up, quote, through their interactions with products and services, employees, physical locations, and communications. From a bottom-up perspective, it is more important that purpose increase the sense of authenticity, coherence, engagement derived from the day-to-day -day experiences of customers, employees, partners, and the communities in which the company operates. The ultimate test of your purpose is whether it improves the way businesses actually operate. In their paper, the authors conclude that there are two additional elements which must be considered pragmatism, and authenticity. Both of these elements are directly in the wheelhouse of the CCO and corporate compliance function. ESG can be a powerful tool to speak to a variety of stakeholders in any organization. Using the author's approach to purpose, as they have outlined, designed for an ESG program, I believe can be a direct way for the CCO to move forward in the design creation and implementation of what could well be a very successful ESG program. So how does all of this impact your organization? Well, as I mentioned, the authors focused on purpose, and that's certainly one way to look at an overall ESG program. They have more, some more specifics that I think are critical because, as we know, an effective compliance program equates to more efficient business processes 
and actually leads to higher ROI and profitability. So what are some of the areas the authors identify? Well, in demand generation, purpose can increase customers' preference for your products and services. And when I use purpose, think of ESG. What about employee engagement? As every compliance officer knows, employee engagement is the most critical part of any compliance program. If you have great tone at the top, policies and procedures, monitoring, and ongoing improvement, you still have to have employee engagement. Employees have to believe in your compliance program and do business through your compliance program by believing in it. Well, the same is true for ESG. And how can ESG strengthen the organization's connection to the employees and the employee's connection back to work and then in a 360-degree approach? Well, this is where the purpose of your organization and, more importantly and more specifically, your ESG program can help that engagement. What about governance and sustainability? I've certainly done podcasts on the G of ESG, but purpose and ESG can help reinforce a company's reputation as a good corporate citizen and a strong ESG performer. Remember, governance starts or ends at the board of directors because a board has to provide its own governance, senior management in a company through oversight, not by running it on a day-to-day basis, but oversight. But it, governance is things like data governance. It's things like institutional justice and institutional fairness. It's things like fairness in hiring. It's things like your whistleblower program. And more importantly, having a culture of speak up where people who speak up are honored and their information is taken down and used to improve your overall corporate compliance program and indeed corporate culture going forward. And what about business strategy and valuation? What does ESG provide to you, your organization, in terms of potentials for profitable growth and reducing a business risk? One thing we've learned from the pandemic, and if it's not clear after the Russia invasion of Ukraine, it's certainly clear now we've gone from disaster recovery to business resilience to business as usual. I'm not sure before the Biden administration began to broadcast that Russia was literally days away from invading Ukraine. And that certainly was propitious intelligence that they broadcast to the world. But before that time, I'm not sure many companies really had thought through the implications of an invasion because they didn't believe that Russian President Putin would actually go through. He would rattle his sabers and get some kind of deal and and move forward like he's always done. But like he did with Chechnya and the eastern part of the Ukraine, He actually physically invaded. Well, now we have huge disruptions, total global markets, the Ukraine and Russia and Belarus. Russia and Belarus are under massive sanctions now. And literally every company, U.S. company and Western Europe company that does business with Russia is being named and shamed as I record this podcast. In addition to the massive trade sanctions, economic sanctions, financial restrictions put on Russia. How are you going to get your employees out of Russia? How about getting them out of Ukraine? How about your supply chain that's in either one of those countries? How about a good part of your business or sales that are in either parts of those countries? Obviously, having a robust ESG program, and more specifically in the G for corporate governance, will allow you to have a way to respond to this. It may be some time because you may have to look at new suppliers, new third parties, new business partners. But because of the situation there now, you can't do business with Russia and you can't do business in Russia. So how does this corporate governance component and strategy actually help you going forward through the, not simply the reduction of business risk, but the management of business risk going forward? I hope that these comments and the article that I've cited to, and I'm going to link to in the show notes, will help you to understand that there's a way for you to think through this in a process-oriented way with engagement and a a variety of shareholders and corporate stakeholders and individual constituents in your organization. I'd like to end with, this is what a compliance professional does every day. You navigate between multiple stakeholders. 
You navigate between the CFO. You navigate between the boards of directors, senior management, business development representatives, HR personnel, IT professionals. The 2020 update to the evaluation of corporate compliance programs mandated that compliance have access to all corporate data, that all silos must be broken through. Well, that's what's required here, the breaking through of silos in your organization so that multiple internal and external constituents are a part of your overall ESG efforts going forward. This is Tom Fox. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the ESG Report.